Kissinger. What would you say was the high point of your tenure as Secretary of State? Well, I would say the 19, in 1973, when I won the Nobel Peace Prize for ending the, the uh, Vietnam War. And the low point? I'd say uh, 1975, when the uh, Vietnam War ended. <laughs> Once the Paris Peace Accords were signed in December of 72, um, <clears throat> that, was, that ended the American direct involvement in Vietnam. But to preserve peace with honor, Nixon and Kissinger decided to defend the anti-communist regime in Cambodia. It was to be a secret mission, airstrikes against communist forces directed by the American embassy in Phnom Penh. It made free the American um, Air Force. They could not bomb in Laos, they could not bomb in Vietnam, so that began the, the incredible bombing of Cambodia. And this is when the number of bombs dropped equal the, the amount of bombs dropped on Japan during World War II. Elizabeth Becker covered the war in Cambodia from 1972 to 1974. We would be able to hear um, the conversation between the pilot, the American pilot in the air, and the American embassy, which was illegally directing the airstrikes. We couldn't understand why there were so many civilian casualties in this war. Why were they hitting all these civilians and villages? It was you know, every nightmare of how you fight a war. From 1969 to 1973, more than 500,000 Cambodians died. By 1974, the bombing had disrupted the nation's agricultural system and a famine ensued. Over two million refugees poured into overcrowded cities. American policy in those years towards Cambodia helped create the conditions, perhaps the only conditions, in which the Khmer Rouge came to power. The Khmer Rouge drew strength from the chaos of the country. When they seized power in 1975, they forced populations of entire cities back to the countryside. Then they began a policy of exterminating their enemies in execution grounds that came to be known as killing fields. By 1979, Another three million Cambodians had lost their lives. No one knew what the Khmer Rouge were going to do. It's quite wrong to blame the United States for the murderousness of the Khmer Rouge. That's a disgracefully dishonest thing to try to do. But the carelessness with which the United States treated Cambodia as a sideshow to Vietnam did lead to disaster to Cambodia. Congress authorized money for bombs in South Vietnam and they went into Cambodia, and there's a criminal act for you, you know, lying. And therefore, I think anybody who died in Cambodia, you could argue criminally that, that they were guilty of murder one. You know, people did it. Nobody authorized them to bomb Cambodia. There was no American war in Cambodia before President Nixon and Dr. Kissinger. That is totally incorrect. I think we inherited a tragedy. We attempted to and succeeded yeah, yeah. in extricating America with honor from this tragedy. Oh, we inherited it. No, you did not inherit it. You created, you were the designers of the Cambodian policy. Crimes against humanity are crimes that comprise genocide or torture or mass murder committed on a widespread and systematic basis uh, against innocent civilian populations. You're talking about war crimes, for example. When World War II started and Germany first bombed London, everyone was horrified. Bombing cities, that, that was criminal behavior. You bombed troops. You didn't bomb innocent civilians. By the time the war was over, we had virtually wiped out Dresden, for example, in one of the most horrible bombing raids ever. And Tokyo, we virtually burned to the ground. So, uh, was that criminal? Perhaps. In July 1973, the detection of Nixon's taping system would lead to the discovery of the Watergate cover-up, the indictment of key members of the White House staff, and the end of the Nixon presidency. 
the lies that had to be told by the administration over Cambodia led eventually to the employment of the plumbers, which was the secret White House team employed to s stop leaks, which led to Watergate, which led to the fall of Nixon. So in a way, the bombing of Cambodia was the first step in the chain that led to the fall of Nixon. Nixon resigned rather than face impeachment. One of the original articles of impeachment addressed the concealment of the Cambodian bombing from Congress. When the impeachment was dropped, so was the investigation into the secret bombing. The new president, Gerald Ford, retained Henry Kissinger as his secretary of state and pardoned Richard Nixon. Nixon managed to cop a shameful plea, accept a pardon. His attorney general, former campaign manager, John Mitchell, is put in an orange jumpsuit and sent down the river. No attorney general has ever been to jail before. But there are more members of the Nixon group, all of them bound to each other by a criminal understanding. There's only one of them left, of the people who were involved in the foreign domestic crimes of that era.